So good evening, all of you. So welcome to the webinar session on formulating an effective questionnaire conducted by the PG Department of Commerce, their mother college, as part of the webinar series 2021. So we have uh, the most eminent person to talk about us on the topic. And Dr. S. Kevin is a name which needs no introduction at all. A great educationist, an incredible researcher, a wonderful author, an amazing resource person, the adjectives and the laurels goes on and on. And I have always felt what makes him stand apart is his sincerity to his profession, his simplicity and humility. And uh, he's willing to walk not just an extra mile, but many more miles to help anyone who is in need, especially with, with the amazing bundle of his knowledge. So dear Kevin, sir, we are truly privileged and uh, humbled with your presence here today with all of us. And I extend to you the most cordial welcome to engage the session, sir. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Anu teacher. Thank you for the good words. OK. Most welcome, sir. Mm -hmm. So dear participants, uh, we are here. Uh, it would have been nice if it was offline, but anyway, I, I cannot see you all. But still, uh, we have to adjust with the situation. So welcome to the online session webinar on questionnaire. How to prepare the questionnaire. Now, you know, all of you, I saw one or two people with the doctorate also there. Uh, so there are, I think, teachers also are also there, I think. You know? Teachers are there, students are there. Uh, yes, many of, uh, we many have of, faculty researchers and students. Uh, I saw some. I was just looking at the at the names. So you will be doing your uh, research or project. Now this topic, questionnaire, is very very important because uh, in any research, be it a small project or a PhD thesis. Uh, or a research article, the key to the success of that project is the questionnaire. Because it is through the questionnaire that we collect the data. My definition of research, we have so many definitions of research. But my definition of research is a simple definition, the search for the truth the search for the truth that's my definition of research so we want the truth and truth is often hidden truth is hidden so we are trying to unearth the hidden truth in a particular situation so that's what we are doing and the instrument that we are using is the questionnaire it is through the questionnaire we are, we are collecting the data and the data has to be true. Only then your result will be true. So that is the one importance of the questionnaire. It is the key to finding the truth. The second important aspect of the questionnaire is, I would say it is the most difficult part of the whole process of research. You know, research involves many, many processes, starting with the uh, identification of a topic, uh, preparation of the questionnaire, doing your literature survey, then analyze, analyzing the data. So some of you might be now thinking that the most difficult part is the data analysis. That was the case some time ago. When I was doing my research, we did not have this computer and so on. So we could not depend upon, there was no computer. We had to depend upon calculators. So there were no softwares. So in those days, maybe analysis of data was difficult. But now the analysis of data, I don't think it is difficult. It is a mechanical process. So now the difficult part, the creative part, the creative part, and therefore the difficult part is the preparation of the questionnaire. So because of these two reasons, our topic today, you have selected, uh, Anu teacher has selected a very good topic, uh, the questionnaire. questionnaire. And we will see how to prepare a good 
question and that is what we are trying to see i have a presentation so we will go to the presentation and uh, uh, it is being recorded and also i will share it with the manager teacher so that uh, you can uh, take it later and use it so i will switch off my video and then go to the presentation okay okay sir right Is it uh, visible? This presentation? Yes, sir. It is yes, visible. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Questionnaire. Questionnaire. So, we are going to understand how to prepare a questionnaire. The research tool, as I said, is a very important tool for primary data collection. You know that there are two types of data. One is the secondary data, which you collect from journals. Uh, uh, databases and so on, secondary data. Primary data is collected from the respondents by asking questions and they will give answers and the answer should be the correct answer. So we want the correct answer so that for getting the correct answer, the question should be the right question. The quality of research depends upon the reliability and validity of the tool. So that is the importance, the quality of the research, the truth of the findings will depend upon the reliability and validity of the tool. So let us try to understand how to prepare a good questionnaire. The today's session is dealing with how to prepare a good questionnaire. We start with a simple uh, example, which I want you to do. There was a survey by a very prominent newspaper, Indian English newspaper published in India. They conducted a survey called Best Cities Survey. Best Cities Survey. So they were trying to find out which are the best cities in India through a questionnaire. And they had uh, questions on different aspects of the city. One aspect they considered was the physical infrastructure of the city. So out of the many aspects which they considered to find out the best cities in India, one aspect was the physical infrastructure of the of the city and uh, they considered this question one question i have taken one question from there how would you rate your city in comparison to other cities in india on these parameters so read the question carefully i want you to do it if you have got a uh, notebook and pencil you can write down the question uh, how would you rate your city? How would you rate your city in comparison to other cities in India on these parameters? The parameters are first, uh, this is the scale. So the rating scale is very good. You give five, good four, average three, poor two, and very poor one. So this is the rating. The parameters are number one, power and electricity situation. So if you think that the power and the electricity situation in your city 
is very good compared to other cities in India, you give five. But if you find that, if you think that uh, the power or electricity situation in your city is very, very poor in comparison to other cities in India, you give one. So, and so on. So good average. If it is average, just like any other city, if it is just average, then you give the answer as three against this number, this uh, parameter, power, electricity situation, uh, uh, you have to give a number. So, all of you, what you, you think of your city, okay, think of your city, it may be Gautam or Maulam or Trivandrum or uh, Mumbai or Chennai. So, your city, take your city first, think of the electricity situation there. And now you have to decide whether it is very good, good, average, poor, or very poor in comparison to other cities in India. And give a number. Okay. So do this exercise. Power electricity of your city. Is it very good? Is it good, average, poor, or very poor in comparison to other cities in India? Give a number there. Second parameter is the pipe to water facilities. There will be water facility will be there. And uh, are you getting water every day, all the time? Sufficient water? So think of your city and what is the position in that city? The water pipe to water facility coming from the government source, water supply. Uh, if you are not using that, then okay, you can leave it. Supposing you are using only uh, water from your well, then you need not answer this question because it, you don't have personal experience. You don't have a personal experience of uh, uh, the pipe to water facility there. Those who are using water from the government sources can answer five, four, three, two, or one. Public transport facilities. All of us are using public transport facilities sometime or the other. So very important aspect of the city is the public transport facility. So all of you can answer that. Is it very good? Is it good? Average, poor or very poor compared to other cities? Okay. Public transport, not a private transport, public transport. Then the next one is the traffic situation. What is the traffic situation? Is it very, uh, very slow moving or is it very clear? The roads are very broad, parking spaces are provided. So what is the traffic situation in your city? You give a number. And the last one is the, okay, I will hide this once again. Uh, parking facility separately is there. Traffic situation is the situation of the road and the parking facilities in the city. Do you have uh, specified parking facilities? Or are you being charged for parking on the roadside? Where do you park? Is it good? Is it bad? So this is the situation. Okay. So this is a question. Uh, and we have given answers to the question. This is prepared by a prominent newspaper. And uh, they must be having a research wing, naturally. They conducted. Uh, that research wing must have prepared the question. So similarly, they were considering different aspects. This is only one aspect. The physical infrastructure is only one aspect which they considered and they had five, five parameters. Similarly, they considered other aspects also. So just a sample I have taken. We answered the question. Now we can do go for data analysis. And uh, you, the data statistician, normally nowadays data analysis is done by statistician using SPSS and so on. And so you can give the data to the statistician. He will do the analysis. He will give you all kinds of results. And you can prepare a report and submit your report. But that report will not be true. It will not reveal the truth. Because this question has a mistake. This question is not properly uh, framed. And naturally, the result, the answer that you get will not be the truth. You know what is the defect there? See, your city, okay, 
you have identified your city in the beginning of the questionnaire of course you will say your city they will be asking a question which is your city okay your city is uh, trivandrum so one of you may be from trivandrum another person is from Cochin, another person is from chennai and so on now each of you when you considered your city i asked you to compare with other cities other cities which other cities which other cities? There are so many cities in India. So you might have considered your you might have compared your city with uh, Mumbai. Those who have gone to Mumbai would have considered compared with Mumbai. Those who have gone to Delhi would have compared with Delhi. Those who have gone to Jaipur would have compared with Jaipur. Those who have not gone anywhere other than Kerala would have compared with Trivandrum or Alapura or some other uh, city in Kerala itself. So the answer that you are getting is the comparison with uh, so many cities. So is that answer correct then? See, each person is comparing with uh, different, different, different cities. With Mumbai, with Chennai, with Calcutta, with Jaipur, with uh, so many other cities. So your comparison is all wrong. The answer which you get is all wrong. On the other hand, they should have said, how would you rate your city in comparison with, you give the benchmark with this particular city, for example. Take one city as a model. In Kerala, for example, supposing you are comparing uh, the uh, respondents in Kerala, you could have selected one uh, good city uh, in, in Kerala. Or you could have selected one city from India, all over India. And only those who have gone to that city, supposing you select one good city, Mumbai is not a good city, Delhi is also not a good city, but some other city, there are so many other cities which are very good. Jaipur is a good city. So supposing Jaipur is selected, only those who have gone to that city will be able to answer. That's another aspect. But let us confine ourselves to Kerala. Select, say, supposing uh, uh, Arnavalam is uh, very good. So you say, how would you rate your city in comparison with a benchmark? Should be specified. Don't say other cities, then everybody will compare with so many other cities. So that there uh, it has to be uh, compared with the benchmark and the benchmark has to be specified like Arnavalam. Then how do you rate your city in comparison with Arnavalam? So those who are going to Arnavalam will be able to compare with that Arnavalam and they will be able to say. And then the comparison that you are getting is all same, similar. So the answer that you are getting is similar. So that is comparable and your results would be good see that so a very prominent newspaper in india with their research wing prepared a questionnaire and they made a mistake so naturally all of us can make mistakes definitely all of us will definitely make mistakes when you are preparing the questionnaire that's why i said in the beginning preparation of the questionnaire is a challenge it's a very serious challenge exercise but at the same time it's a very important exercise so that is why we are trying to understand how to prepare a questionnaire by now you would have understood that uh, questionnaire is important preparation of the questionnaire is difficult okay let us move on a questionnaire has four dimensions so one is the context in which context are you preparing the questionnaire? We don't prepare a questionnaire for the sake of preparing a questionnaire. We have a conduct, we are doing a study. And the, this study has a topic and there are respondents. So who are the respondents? So that is the context of the study. Are they literate? Are they illiterate? Are they educated? So depending upon the respondents nature and their type, uh, so we have to prepare the questionnaire, keeping that in mind. So that is the context of the questionnaire. So we have to keep that in mind. That will affect the questionnaire preparation of the questionnaire. Second is the content of the questionnaire. We are preparing the questionnaire for a particular group of respondents and that is the context. Now in the questionnaire, there will be a number of questions. So that is the content of the questionnaire. That is the most important part. And this content 
uh, is prepared in a particular way. That is what we are going to see. And this is derived from the literature survey and the theoretical review. So our topic uh, as a theory, we do literature survey, try to find out what other people have studied based on all those things. We will be able to uh, uh, get the contents for the our questionnaire. And this contents will include many questions which are dealing with the variables. So every study has variables. We may be studying about the income of the people, the socioeconomic status of the people, their perceptions about many things. So these are the variables that we are studying and we have to measure the variables. These variables have to be measured because we have to do data analysis. Analysis has to be done. Statistical analysis has to be done for which we require data, numbers, 5, 4, 3, 2, etc. So we have, we are studying different variables and the variables have to be measured. So what are the variables? How are they going to be asked in the questionnaire? And how are they going to be measured? These are the things that we are trying to understand. That is the content of the questionnaire. Third is the configuration. How do you ask the question? Because it has to be a question. So how do you ask the question? Refers to configuration refers to the framing of the questions. The questions has to be asked in a particular way so that we have to get the answer. Sometimes if you ask some questions in a particular way, they will not give you the truth. See, remember I said, research is the search for the truth. Truth is sometimes confidential. It is uh, sentimental. People may not like to reveal the truth. So how to, how to get the truth? So confidential uh, dealing with their family or dealing with their personal things. So they may not like to reveal. So how do you get all those things? So that depends on how do you frame your questions? How do you ask your question? So that is configuration. And uh, this configuration will influence not only the truth, but also the data analysis part. The question, the, con the question should be configured in such a way that we get, uh, we get numbers because data analysis has to be done. So we have a context, then we have the content of the question, the number of questions included there. And these questions have to be configured or asked in a particular way. So these are the things that we are going to study. And last is the quality of the questionnaire. The quality, the questionnaire should have reliability and validity. Two important terms are reliability. The questionnaire should be reliable. The questionnaire should be valid. What do we mean by reliability? And what do we mean by validity? We will be seeing towards the end of the session. Okay, so the context, let me explain the context a little more. The survey constitute the principal source of primary data in social science research. So we are doing a social science research because we are studying about people and we have to collect primary data. And for that, we use a survey. We uh, go to the people, give them a questionnaire or ask them questions. So the survey is the principal source of primary data or we can say it is a fact-finding study, a field study. We go to the field and we try to find the fact, the truth. And what we do is we select a representative sample of the population. We don't do the survey among all the people involved in the study. We select a sample. You know that those who are doing research will know that. We select a sample, a small sample from the population. There are methods of selecting the sample but we finally have a small sample and we are asking the questions uh, or collecting the data from the sample. Now, the survey covers different subjects. So there are different types of questions and different uh, aspects of the respondents are being asked. We start with the demographic characteristics like uh, what is their gender? Are they, is the person male or female? So what is the gender? Where does he reside? The demographic characteristics. Is he a rural, urban person? So those demographic characteristics are very simple. They will answer it very truthfully. There is no, uh, no doubt about that. And even we can verify them. So those things we can verify. Then we ask some questions about the social conditions because it's a social science study. So some questions about the social conditions of the person may be required, if required. Some questions on the economic conditions, if required. So social conditions, economic conditions, if they are relevant to the study. 
The most important aspect is the last two. In this survey, we are trying to find out the people's opinions and attitudes. So we may be studying about their job satisfaction. Supposing you're conducting a study about uh, among employees, KSCB employees or government employees or bank employees. So let us take bank employees. So we are conducting a study among bank employees. So we ask their demographic characteristics, uh, their social conditions, economic condition. Then we come to the question. We are studying about the job satisfaction or stress and strain of the bank employees. So we want their opinion. We want their attitude. Then people's behavior and activities. What are they doing in the bank and outside the bank? They have a lot of work. How do they finish the work? What are the, act what are the behavior patterns? Are they taking their work home, doing their work uh, on holidays, extra time? So how are they managing with the extra pressure? Uh, when they are under pressure, what do they do? See, they may be under pressure, under stress, uh, because bank employees are now considered uh, it's a stressful job. So there's a lot of pressure, a lot of stress. They are not satisfied. So what do they do? How do they adjust? So their behavior pattern, their activities, so their opinions, attitude. So these are the things that we want to know. These are the things that we want to know. For that, we ask questions. Sir. We'll ask questions. But see, these are very personal things. Very personal things. They may not like to reveal these things. So there, there's a problem there. So this, the opinion, attitudes, their behaviors, we don't see their behaviors. We are just meeting them, asking them questions. We are not seeing what they are doing at home, what are they doing in the bank. We are not seeing their behavior. We are not seeing their activities. We are only asking questions about them. They have to reveal that. Their opinions and attitudes are within their mind. It is in their mind. We cannot read their mind. We cannot see their mind. So what is in their mind has to be revealed. We have to extract. We have to get it out of them. So it's a very difficult exercise. That's why I said preparing the questionnaire is a difficult exercise. So it's a challenging exercise because what is in the mind of the person, we have to get it correctly. They can tell a lie. They can tell uh, a lie. If you ask a question and if you are insisting on answer, they will not tell you the truth. They may not tell you the truth. They may say an answer which may be false. We do not know. So you see, getting the truth about the opinions, attitudes, which are in their mind, we cannot read that. So it is very difficult. Their behaviors and activities, we are not seeing them. They have to reveal to us. They have to tell us what they are doing, how they are um, doing their uh, coping with their stress and strain. So again, we have to believe them. Therefore, the questions has to be asked in such a way that you will get the truth. If you directly ask the question, they will not tell you the truth because they are personal things. So we have to frame, that is the framing of the question. You remember, the, 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 see the third part there, see, configuration of the question. That framing of the question is very important. Configuration of the question is very important. We have to frame the question in such a way that they will reveal the truth without feeling embarrassed, without feeling any strain, stress, without feeling embarrassed. So the configuration of the question is very important. The content is important. The configuration is equally important, sometimes more important than uh, the uh, content. So this is the uh, this is the challenge here. So in the survey, in the questionnaire, we have to ask them a lot of personal things, uh, opinions, attitudes, behaviors, activities, and you have to get the truth by framing the question in the right way. So that is what we are going to see. So I'm still in the introduction stage. We have not yet come to the questionnaire. Okay. Now, before preparing the questionnaire, we have to do as a few things. The preliminary steps is, first of all, what are the information that we need before framing questions and so on? What information do we need? We have to list out the information that we need. Then we have to convert it into questions. So we need some data. Finally, we need some data. What are those data that we require? We have to list out. Then convert it into questions properly, in the proper way. Convert them into questions. And uh, the questions have to be arranged in a logical order. It should not be confusing uh, to the person who is trying to fill up the questionnaire. He should not feel confused. It should be in a logical order so that he feels comfortable filling up the questionnaire. 
So the person should be comfortable with filling up the question. For that, we have to start from simple questions, move on to personal questions. So don't straight away first question. Don't ask a personal question first. Start with simple, simple questions, easy questions, then move to the more difficult questions, personal questions, confidential questions. And this method is known as a funnel method where we use uh, general broad questions in the beginning followed by specific questions. So we start with general questions about their gender, their residential status, their income and so on. Then move on to personal questions. So funnel method it is called and then we conduct a pilot study uh, to uh, find out whether people are comfortable with the question. Do a pre-test or pilot study if you find that uh, uh the people are comfortable with the questions uh, and the data that we get you can test it for with for reliability by using a statistical test once you think that the pilot study has given you reliable data then you can proceed to uh the final draft make some modifications based on the pilot study and prepare the final draft of the questionnaire which will be used for your data collection so this is the steps in preparation of the questionnaire okay right now we come to the content of the questionnaire what is there in the questionnaire the questionnaire seeks information on different types of variables related to the study so this is what we are doing we have our study will have different variables so so our question the questionnaire questions in the questionnaire they are asking information regarding the variables of the study and from where do you get the variables we get the variables from your conceptual framework and your literature survey from your literature survey from your conceptual framework you will understand the variables of your study supposing you're studying about job satisfaction so what are the variables of the job satisfaction you will get it from the theory, theory about job satisfaction and the pre previous studies about job satisfaction so you get the variables and this uh, we are asking seeking data information about the variables and these variables may be broadly classified into objective type of variables and subjective type of variables so objective means based on the object based on the person that is his income marital status his gender his residential status so all these are based on that object the person his income, marital status, gender, residential status, etc. These are, we see, very easily verifiable. They will answer it correctly. They don't feel embarrassed about all those things. So they will correct, give the correct answers. So the second type of variables are called subjective variables. So here is the problem. Subjective variable is in the mind of the person. It is subjective. It is in the person's mind. His feelings attitudes, uh, perceptions, uh, etc. About something, about job satisfaction, for example. Feelings, uh, attitudes, perceptions, uh, etc. So that is in the mind of the person, it is subject. It is very difficult to get these. Uh, so subjective variables, uh, very difficult to get the subjective variables. Uh. Objective variables, uh, very easy. Marital status, we know the answers. Married, unmarried, widowed, divorced, etc. So the classifications are very clear. Gender, male, female, etc. Income, uh, up to 10,000, 10,000, 20,000. So the classifications are clear. But when you come to the feelings and attitudes, you have to define the feelings. What do you mean by feelings? What do you mean by perceptions? There's no classification like a marital status. So marital status is classified. We know the classification. But when you come to the feelings and attitudes and perceptions, we do not know the classifications. The researcher has to define those feelings. So he has to define the feelings with respect to his study. He may be studying about job satisfaction. So he has to define what is the feelings regarding job satisfaction, what is the attitude, perception. So they have to be operationally defined and also measured. Feelings can be very intense. So the feelings can be minimum. The perceptions can be very, very intense. It can be very minimal. So they have to be measured on a scale. So subjective variables have to be defined and measured on a scale. 
So your questionnaire, the objective part of the questionnaire is easy. There's no difficulty. There's no challenge there. The challenge comes in the subjective part of your questionnaire where you are trying to find out the feelings, attitudes, perceptions of the respondents. And that is the most important information that you require. And that is difficult. It has to be defined. It has to be measured using scale. We will try to understand how to do that. These two, how to define, how to measure the subjective variables. The other objective variables is very clear. Everybody knows that. So operational definition of the variable. How do you define an operational uh, definition, uh, a variable? How do you define a variable, operational definition? So we start with the a variable is a concept, C. A variable is a concept. It's a broad concept, something in our mind. This concept can be divided. It has to be divided. And that division is called dimensions. So it may have many dimensions. So the broad concept, job satisfaction is a broad concept. Job satisfaction includes many things. See, the word is one word, two words, job satisfaction, two words. It's a concept. It's very broad. But it includes many things. It includes many things. It includes your salary. It includes your work environment. It includes the nature of your colleagues who are working with you. Are they friendly? It includes the, the attitude of your superior. Easy, how is he? See, see, so the job satisfaction is a very broad concept. It has got, uh, it includes many things, many aspects. Those aspects are called dimensions. And these dimensions again may be subdivided, say monetary aspects. So I'll give you an example. Job satisfaction is a concept which is very broad. One of the subdivisions is monetary aspects. There are monetary aspects and non-monetary aspects in job satisfaction. So the monetary aspects is the dimension. These are the sub-components of the variable. And this may again be subdivided. Each dimension may have several elements. See, the monetary aspect is a subdivision. The monetary aspects may include your salary, your, uh, say, uh, perquisites like uh, your Onam festival elements, uh, or your leave facilities along with you, leave travel facilities. So the monetary aspect itself comprises of many things. So those are the elements. So the concept is very broad. It may be divided into many dimensions and each dimension again may, subdivide, may be subdivided into small, small elements. And one of the elements is salary. So salary is an element which is coming under dimension called monetary aspects, which is one of the dimensions of the broad concept of job satisfaction. See that? So this is how we define the study. I just gave you an example. Similarly, whatever is your study, there will be a broad concept which has to be divided into dimensions and which has to be again subdivided into elements. The elements are the measurable aspects or features of each dimension. So the last part is the elements, which we are trying to measure. We will be measuring the elements. So we cannot ask a person, the respondents, are you satisfied with your job? We don't ask that question. We don't ask the question, are you satisfied with your job? Yes or no, that is not the answer. So we have to go into job satisfaction. What does it mean? So we have to define, operationally define, what is job satisfaction? Job satisfaction includes many things. Those many things include, again, many things. So we have to define the different dimensions and the defined elements of the broad concept of job satisfaction. And then only we can start preparing questions. The questions will be on the elements. The questions will be on the elements and the measurement also will be on the elements. So this is the first step in the preparation of the questionnaire, definition of the variables. Okay, this is okay. Uh, see, this is a graphical representation. We have a concept which may be subdivided into dimension one, dimension two, dimension three, etc. Each dimension again will be subdivided into element one, element two, element three, element four, etc. and so on. So this has to be prepared in the form of a table. 
in the form of a table. So we cannot start preparing the questionnaire unless we do this homework. This homework has to be done. Only after that we can start with the question. Don't straight away, we cannot ask questions straight away. In the preparation of the questionnaire, we don't start with the questions. We start with the variables. We say what is C, what is D1, D2, E1, E2, E3, etc. Then you start asking questions about E1, E2, E3, etc. Okay. Let me show you the dimensions and elements of the concept called job satisfaction so that you get a clear idea about what is meant by concept dimensions and elements. Job satisfaction is a broad concept. There are dimensions and each dimension can be subdivided into elements. Let us take this first one, work. So job satisfaction includes a dimension called work because there's a work you are working somewhere so there's a work involved there you may be preparing accounts you may be preparing some letters you may be preparing reports so there's a work involved so only if you're satisfied with the work you will have job satisfaction so one of the dimensions of job satisfaction is the work itself now this work again is a broad word work there are elements. It has this work has, can be divided into uh, elements called. So, what are the elements here? Nature of the work. That is one element of the dimension work. Pressure of the work. Is there pressure of the work? Is there a time? Should you finish your work by 11, 12? Are you given time? The, is your superior putting pressure on you? Is the nature of the work comfortable? Or is it difficult? See, nature of the work is it difficult, easy, uh, unknown. What is the pressure? Ease of doing the work. Can you do it easily? What is the work environment where you are doing? You are sitting in a crowded place and a lot of noise is there. Or are you sitting in a comfortable room or a comfortable cabin where you are? So that work environment. I think you have understood now. Job satisfaction is a very big, broad concept. It includes many things called dimensions. One of the dimension is the work. And this work again can be subdivided into elements like the nature of the work, uh, pressure of the work, uh, ease of doing the work, uh, work and um, If the nature of work is difficult, you will not have job satisfaction. If there is a lot of pressure, you will not have job satisfaction. If it is difficult to do the work, it is you will not have job satisfaction. And if the work environment is not at all good, friendly, then you will not have job satisfaction. See. So each element is going to affect your job satisfaction. So your question should be on what is the nature of work? What is the pressure of the work? What is ease of doing work? What is work environment? So your question is not on job satisfaction. Your question is not on the work. Your question is on the elements. So you will have some questions on the nature of the work. You will have some questions on the pressure of the work. You will have some questions on ease of doing the work and also some questions on work environment. There again, the configuration is important. You are not going to ask, what is the nature of your work? That is not how we are asking the question. See, what is the nature of your work? That is not how we are configuring the question. The question has to be configured in, in a different way, in a very, very... Uh, in uh, such a way that you have to get the truth. So we are not going to ask the question, what is the nature of your work? Is there pressure in your work? Is it easy to do your work? Is your work environment good? That is not the way we are going to ask the questions. We are going to ask the questions in a different way. So that is called the configuration of the questions. Okay, so we'll come to that a little later. So one of the dimensions we have seen, the second dimension is the relation with your superior. Relation with your superior is a dimension. It includes many elements, many aspects. For example, guidance received. Are you receiving any guidance for your work from the superior? Recognition. When you are doing a good work, does the superior recognize your work? Supervision. Does the superior supervise your work and give you directions? Comfort level of the relation with the superior. Are you afraid of the superior? 
or are you friendly with the superior are you comfortable with the superior see so these are the elements now you can you can i hope you are able to follow me now next dimension is the social status of the job see each job has its own social status social status every job has its own social status the job all jobs are important are required for society but the status of the job social status of the job is different there are two things here two elements here one is how does the society perceive your job society perception of your job and your second is the self assessment of your status how is your assessment of your job how do you do how does the society look at your job how do you look at your job a bank employee society may look at the bank employee as a as a great job but being a bank employee you may not like the job because it is uh, there's a lot of lot of stress and uh, or sometimes you may like the job i remember when i was a student for bcom uh, my ambition was to become a bank manager because a bank job is fantastic and uh, even now so in those days i wanted to become a bank manager so i finished my bcom i got second rank in the university of kerala uh, i studied as a private candidate so i got i did not study in any college and i got second rank so then i started writing uh, the bank tests we did not have coaching centers in those days so i started writing the bank test for different banks uh, one after the other because that was my ambition and i got into reserve bank of india i got i, got, I passed the test of two three banks and finally got into reserve bank of india because the salary is very high and so my ambition was uh, fulfilled i became an officer in the reserve bank of india then i realized that it's a useless job uh, after getting into the job see the society perception reserve bank officer is great but my perception after getting into the job started doing the job so boring in those days there was no computer remember no computers so you have to write in with your hand pen and so it's, uh, it is so repetitive and so boring i got fed up with the job then i did my mcom as a private candidate there uh, i wanted to get out of the bank of india then i got first rank fortunately and shifted to the teaching job which i like there i like the teaching job i like so you see that the self assessment i was just giving an example of what is meant by society perceives that job as great but your self assessment and may be totally different okay participation in decision making participation in decision making so that is an dimension participation in decision making so if you are participating in decision making you will be satisfied with your job because you have an importance there importance is there and uh, that that is a dimension which has elements there the element is participation in decisions communication of the decisions the superiors are communicating the decisions to you then communication of suggestions you are allowed to make suggestions to the superiors so if that all this is happening is all this is part of participation in decision making and you will be happy these are the some of the dimensions again i'll give you some more dimensions uh, monetary aspects is a dimension very important dimension of job satisfaction and the elements are salary is one element perquisites are another element promotion prospects are another element of monetary aspects now it should be very clear to you grievance redressal so there will be grievances in any job situation and is there an availability of grievance redressal facility is that facility effective is it fair just so these are the elements of grievance redressal system which is a dimension of the job satisfaction so i think by now it should be very clear to you that uh, there is a concept there is a dimension and there are elements and we will concentrate on the elements for asking questions so this is the first step in the preparation of the questionnaire okay now now we come to a very important aspect of the now we are starting to prepare the questionnaire after identifying the elements we will start preparing the questionnaire so i told you earlier again so here uh so for example availability of grievance redressal we are not asking going to ask the question 
uh, is there a grievance redressal facility, yes or no? That is not the question and the answer that we are going to have. Is there a grievance redressal facility, yes, no? Is this facility effective, yes, no? Is this grievance redressal facility fair, yes, no? That is meaningless. That is not the way we are going to ask questions. So we want more details about uh, the availability, the effectiveness, the fairness. We want more details and the truth also. We want the truth also. Uh, supposing, for example, here, uh, see relation with the superior. You want to find out, uh, uh, we are not going to ask the question, are you receiving guidance from the superior? Yes or no? Is your job recognized by a superior? Yes or no? Is your superior supervising your job? Yes or no? That is not the way we are going to ask the questions. Because if you ask uh, this type of questions, the person may not reveal the truth because he may be afraid. He may be afraid that the superior will see these answers. So he is giving the answers. So he is afraid that the superior may see the answers and then he will take action against him. So, see, it's confidential, very sensitive. So, this information data is confidential, sensitive. So, if you directly ask him whether he's receiving uh, guidance from the uh, superior, he may not answer that question. So, we have to put it in a different way. That is what we are going to study. Through what is called constructs and items. Uh, this is a typical pattern in all questionnaires. In all questionnaires, we will have constructs and items. So let us try to understand what is meant by a construct and what is meant by items. Incidentally, those who are having doubts, you can note down in your notebook. You can ask me at the end of the session. You can ask me any doubts. Already 7.30. Okay, right. Right, right. Okay, I'll speed up a little. Right, so constructs and items. See, perceptions attitudes and psychological traits are not directly observable. So we want the perception of the person respondent, we want the attitude of the respondent, we want the psychological uh, traits uh, or feelings of the respondent, but they are not directly visible. We cannot see them. They're not visible, observable. These are latent, latent means hidden. They are hidden variables and they are sometimes called constructs. So these hidden variables like perceptions and attitudes and feelings, so they are hidden, they are latent, and we call them constructs. Okay, it's a technical term. Technical term, constructs. Now, example. Perception of an employee regarding job satisfaction. That was the example that we were considering. What is the perception of an employee regarding job satisfaction, which is in his mind, it is hidden. It is not observable. We cannot see it. We cannot read it. It is hidden. It is a construct. Attitude of a consumer towards a product. Supposing a person purchases a mobile phone. He has a particular attitude towards that product. He may like it. He may not like it. So uh, the marketing people would like to know what is the attitude of a consumer towards their product. Very important. They are very eager to know that. But it is hidden. It is in the mind of the person, consumer. It is latent, hidden. Uh, therefore, we can call it a construct. Organizational commitment of an employee. An employee is working in an organization. That employee, is, uh, does he have a commitment to the organization? Or does he not have a commitment to the organization? Very important aspect as far as HR people are concerned. Uh, but it is hidden. It is hidden in the mind of the employee. So it is not observable this latent variable so we can call it a construct so how do you get the answer how do you find out the answer in these cases that is what we are going to see construction items these constructs are assessed and measured with the help of several statements both positive and negative regarding the different aspects of the constructor. Okay, read that sentence again. 
these constructs are assessed and measured with the help of several statements both positive and negative regarding the different aspects of the construct so say for example you take this uh, perception of an employee regarding job satisfaction so there are different aspects of job satisfaction we have seen that there are different elements of job satisfaction see there are different elements of job satisfaction so we are going to prepare different statements regarding the different aspects of job satisfaction see the statements may be both positive and negative we are going to have several statements regarding those elements both positive and negative regarding the different aspects of the construct these statements are referred to as items of the construct these statements are referred to as items of the construct so construct means your perception attitude we are going to find out those perceptions and attitudes by including several statements regarding that we are not asking any question here we are not asking them any questions we are going to make some statements regarding these attitudes or perception and these statements are called items then suitable rating scales like likert scale or itemized rating scale uh, we will see that later may be used for the measurement so we will measure the items the, there are many statements so the different statements will be measured i'll give an example then you will understand okay an example supposing your attitude towards e learning we are now having e learning okay all of us are in e learning mode this is an example of an e learning therefore i took a, so you must have had many experience of e learning because during the last two years we were having only webinars mostly so instead of seminars we are webinars so it's e learning so you must have developed an attitude the students and teachers must have developed an attitude towards e-learning i want to know supposing i want to know i'm a researcher i want to know whether e-learning is good or bad is it effective i want to know that i'm doing a research supposing so what is the attitude of students towards e-learning i'm trying to find out so this is called a constructor this attitude is in the mind of the students i cannot see it it is latent so we call it a constructor attitude towards e-learning okay now we have to prepare different statements called items one use of it tools enhances the quality of teaching use of it tools enhances the quality of teaching it's a simple statement we are not asking any question here we are saying that use of it tools enhances the quality of teaching and we will give a scale just like I gave you in the beginning, the city, remember the city example, very good, good and so on. So similarly here, we are asking the respondents whether you agree with the statements. We are giving a simple statement, use of IT tools enhances the quality of teaching, it's a simple statement. Do you agree with this? Do you agree with this? So there we are going to use a scale, we are not saying yes or no. Whether you fully agree with that, partly agree with that. Whether you are indifferent to that, whether you fully dis partly disagree, fully disagree. So we are going to use a five-point scale. Fully agree, we give five marks. The person will write five against that. Partly agree, he will write four. He's indifferent, he will write two, three. Partly disagree, he will write two. Fully disagree, he will write one. Okay, see? Then, what have you understood? There is a statement here. The respondent is agreeing to that. He is giving 5, 4, 3, 2, etc. But what do you understand about the attitude? We are trying to find out the attitude, isn't it? We are trying to find out the attitude towards e-learning. What, what do you understand about the attitude? So supposing use of IT tools enhances the quality of teaching. I am using, all of us are using IT tools. I am using this PowerPoint presentation laptop. It's an IT tool. You are using either your mobile or your laptop and you are using Google. It's an IT tool. 
use of IT tool enhances the quality of teaching. If a person agrees to this statement, that means his attitude towards e-learning is positive, is favorable. See, a person who agrees to the statement, his attitude towards e-learning is favorable or positive. If he does not agree with the statement, he disagrees, fully disagrees with the statement. If he fully disagrees with the statement, if he fully disagrees with the statement, then that means he his attitude towards e-learning is negative. See, if he fully disagrees with the statement, he does not say that use of IT tools is enhancing the quality of teaching. He does not agree. That means his attitude is negative. See how we understand. So this is so this is a very simple way. We are not asking them any questions. We are simply giving a statement, a very innocent statement. And depending upon whether he agrees with that, so we are trying to understand his so that hidden attitude in his mind is revealed through his agreement to these statements. Say, for example, next the second sentence. Face-to-face -face classroom teaching is an effective method of teaching. Face-to-face -face classroom teaching is an effective method of teaching. A person who agrees to this, his attitude towards e-learning is negative. He does not have a favorable attitude towards e-learning because he likes face-to-face -face classroom teaching. So a person who likes the face-to-face -face classroom teaching he is an effective method. If he agrees to the statement, that means he does not have a positive attitude towards e-learning. See, that is why we have to give both positive and negative statements. Third one, it is difficult to switch over to an IT enabled teaching learning process. So he's saying it is very difficult to switch over. So that means his attitude towards e-learning is negative. Now you understand? Adoption of IT tools in teaching learning has become a fashion. So it is a fashion now, it has to be used. So his attitude is favorable. Use of IT tools promotes student-centric learning. He says IT tools are good. It promotes student-centric learning. That means his attitude towards e-learning is positive, good. So this is what is called a construct and item. So, so we use this in all questionnaires to find out your attitudes, your perceptions, your feelings. So we don't directly ask them, what is your feeling? What is your perception? That is not the way we ask questions. Instead, we select statements, proper statements regarding that particular attitude, feeling, give the statements, use a scale, 5 point, 4 point, 3 point scale to measure the agreement or disagreement. And then you get scores and those scores will be used for data analysis later on so this is very important construct and items okay again another example so that you understand the constructs and items the construct is relation with your superior relation with your superior we want to find out what is the relation with the superior we are not asking a question what is your relation with your superior is it good or bad average no that is not the way we are going to ask the question nobody will answer that question Instead, we create some items or statements. For example, my superior shows a great deal of recognition for a job well done. My superior shows a great deal of recognition for a job well done. So it's a simple statement, uh, innocent statement. He will agree or disagree. If he agrees, that means his relation with the superior is good. If he disagrees, then his relation with the superior is not so good. See, that recognition part. So this is an element, if you remember, we have seen that recognition is an element of the dimension relation with the superior. So for each element, we are giving a statement. I am satisfied with the guidance received from my superior. Guidance is an element there. I am satisfied with the guidance received from my superior. I agree or disagree, fully agree, partly agree, indifferent, partly disagree and so on. See? So, so this statement means, so he is more comfortable. The respondent is more comfortable uh, agreeing with the statements. I feel that my superior is closely monitoring my work. That's supervision. Supervision. I am dissatisfied with the leadership that I am getting from my superior. I am dissatisfied. 
If he agrees with that, then his relation with the superior is not good. If he does not agree with the statement, I am dissatisfied, he does not agree with that, that means his relation with the superior is good. It's a negative statement. The first three are positive. Fourth one is a negative statement. My relation with the superior is official in nature. There's nothing friendly, nothing personal. It is purely official. That means the relation is not very good. So depending upon, so these are simple statements uh, which uh, they will not feel embarrassed to answer. So this is an example of construct an array and items, construct an items. Okay, so in every questionnaire, there will be constructs and items. You examine any questionnaire, when you uh, take the questionnaires of different people, there will always be constructs and items. So you have to be very clearly understand what is meant by constructs and items. You should be able to prepare constructs and items in your questionnaire also. Now we come to the measurement of the variables. So we have seen now how to prepare the questionnaire. Uh, there will be direct questions also. So I'm not saying that all, all questions will be in the form of constructs and items. Don't misunderstand me. There will be some questions also, but constructs and items will be there for understanding the perceptions and attitudes. So there will be other questions, uh, different types of questions will be there. Now, measurement of the variables. We have to measure the variables, very important because we need data numbers. So we have to measure the variable. So we can use for measurement, we use scales. So two types of scales can be used. One is the rating scale, the other is called the ranking scale. We can ask them to rank some things, we can ask them to rate some things. So we will study the rating scales first. The first scale, we have different scales. The first scale is called a dichotomous scale. Yes, no. Sometimes we may have to ask a yes or no question. Uh, so we can ask, no, usually it is avoided. We don't ask yes or no questions in a research questionnaire. In a research questionnaire, we don't have yes or no questions, but sometimes it may be there still, doesn't matter. Uh, then we have category scale. That is, we have different categories like male, female, urban, rural, urban. So the person will belong to one of these categories. So we will ask him to tick to which category he belongs. So urban, rural, semi-urban, low income, middle income, high income, lowly educated, uh, highly educated, or, or we give the different education qualifications and we ask them to tick and so on. So this is easily understood category scale. It's called a category scale. Then we have, we come to the more important scales like Likert scale is an agreement to statements on a five point scale. It's called Likert scale. Likert is the name of the person who gave the scale. It's fully agree, partly agree, neither agree, nor disagree, partly disagree, fully disagree. Five, four, three, two, one. It's a five point scale. Likert scale commonly used. Uh, these are the scale points. This is known as the scale points. Scale points are five, fully agree, three, uh, four, agree, three, neither agree, nor disagree, neutral, two, disagree, and uh, one, fully disagree. So scales usually do not have zero. Remember that we don't use zero because zero is a difficult number. Uh, it is difficult to analyze. Therefore, zero is a very complicated number uh, mathematically. So the scales do not use zero. Sometimes you may think that for, for fully disagree, zero is better. No, we don't use zero because of the mathematical complications of zero. So we have a five point scale, fully disagree means one. Next, now we come to what is called a composite scale. Composite scale or a composite score. Sometimes it is called a composite score. See, we have constructed items. We have seen constructed items. Items means several statements are used. See, several statements can be used to measure a particular attitude or perception. The items, constructs and items. And each item will be measured. Each item will be measured as 5, 4, 3, 2, etc. And the attitude is measured with these different items. So each statement is used to represent one aspect of that attitude. So we have different statements. Each statement measures one aspect of the attitude and it is also measured. And we total the score of uh, the different attitude, uh, different items, we get the composite score. Because that job, uh, say for example, relation with superior, 
is a dimension. Several statements are used. Each statement has a score. Total the score of each statement and you get the composite score. Composite score means total score. By summing up the respondents' responses to multiple items in the scale, the attitude is measured. I'll give you an example. See here, look at this. Relation with superior, composite score. We are trying to find out what is the score of the relation with the superior. What is the score of a respondent about relation with the superior? See, there are different statements. My superior shows a great deal of recognition for a job well done. He has given five, which means he fully agrees. Second statement, he has given four. That means he agrees. Third statement, he has given three, which means he is neutral. Neutral. The fourth statement, I am dissatisfied with the leadership. He has uh, not agreed with that. He has not agreed with that. So we have to reverse the score. Reverse the score has become four. He has given he has given a score of two, which means he is partly disagree, which means it's a negative statement. So the score has to be reversed to four. My relation with the superior is official in nature. That's again negative. It's a negative statement. So he has given a score of two, which means he is partly disagreeing with that. That means he has to be. We have to reverse the score and become four. So the total score for the five statements is 20. The maximum score for all the five statements together because the maximum is five. So five into five maximum score is 25. Minimum score, if he is giving one for each of these statements, one, 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 the minimum score is five. So the minimum score is five for relation with the superior. Minimum score is five. Maximum score is 25. This particular person has got a score of 20. That means his relation with the superior is fairly good because very close to 25. See, this is how this is called a composite score or a total score, which measures the score of the constructor from the scores of the items. Right. Then with the score, you will take the score of all the respondents. We will get, say, this is one respondent score. 20 is the respondent, for the respondent number one, his score. The next respondent score may be only eight. The next respondent score may be 23. So supposing there are 300 respondents, we will get 300 scores. And with the scores, the statistician will do all kinds of analysis. He can do a lot of analysis. That is a different topic. I'm not going into that. Okay. Semantic differential scale. Another scale that we are going to use. It's called semantic differential scale or numerical scale. Numerical scale. Let us say bipolar attitudes are identified at the extremes of the scale. Bipolar means two extreme ends. For example, a product is useful or useless. Two extremes. Useful or useless. Then the question is how useless how useful is it is it fully useful or only partly useful see so we have a question there how much is the usefulness so there has to be a scale these are the two extremes useful and useless are the two extremes so how much is this uh, that usefulness so a scale can be used the respondents attitude is indicated on a semantic space or a numerical scale Supposing you give useful, useless, you give uh, some dots there. It is called semantic space. Semantic space. Useful, useless. Supposing you give numbers. Satisfied, dissatisfied. Two extremes are satisfied, dissatisfied. Seven, fully satisfied. Six, uh, partly satisfied. Five, etc. So how much is your satisfaction is... You can take either seven or six or five. Four means neutral. Three, two, and one means you are dissatisfied. How much are you dissatisfied? Three, two, one means fully dissatisfied. So if you give numbers, it is called a numerical scale. If you are just giving space instead of numbers and you are taking the space, it is called a semantic space. So nowadays, we give numbers because it is easy. We have to use the computer for analyzing. So we use, it is called, a, look at the heading of this uh, slide, semantic differential scale or numerical scale we use numerical scale now 
the scale can be a five point scale seven point scale or 10 point scale or nine point scale it is up to the researcher he can use any scale so here i have used a seven point scale okay so this is another scale so when you're studying about different products uh, useful useless and so on or you are uh, whether you are satisfied with the particular product which you purchased or not so you can use this kind of scale see it can be used for measuring the different qualities of a product or a person this scale can be used for measuring the different qualities of a product or a person helpful unhelpful if a person friendly unfriendly how friendly is he? How unfriendly is he? You can use a three-point scale, five-point scale, seven-point scale. Harmonious, quarrelsome, cheerful, gloomy, etc. Now we come to another scale called itemized rating scale. Say here, we have seen here number seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. So satisfied, seven, six, five, four. So how, so that seven number, what does it indicate? We don't know. Six, sir five we don't know see this is a numerical scale only numbers are given but in the next scale called itemized rating scale we use a five point or a seven point scale with angers or descriptions for each number so each number will have a description one means very dissatisfied two means dissatisfied Three means neither satisfied nor dissatisfied. Four means satisfied. Five means very very satisfied. So the numerical scale, the numbers are given. There is no description. Itemized rating scale is the same. Numbers are described. Each number. What does that number mean? So it's more meaningful. So you know what one means, what two means, what three means, etc. So these are different scales in your questionnaire for different questions you'll be using different scales so we have different types of questions for each type for each question you may use a different scale depending so the suitable scale has to be used now there is a question here there are two types of scales five point or seven point can we use a four point scale that is the question can we have a four point scale or a six point scale or an eight point scale see so two types of scales a balanced scale with a neutral point this five point and seven point are known as balanced scale with a neutral point in between the third number three look at number three three means neither satisfied nor dissatisfied there's a neutral point there neutral point it's a balanced scale with a neutral point Supposing you have a four point scale, it will be very dissatisfied. Two means dissatisfied. Three means satisfied. Four means very satisfied. So you don't have a neutral point there. So you can have a four point scale. You can have a six point scale. No problem. That will be known as an unbalanced scale because without a neutral point. See, not at all satisfied. Two means somewhat satisfied. Three means moderately satisfied, four means very much satisfied. Both are possible. There are some differences, difficulties with regard to those uh, two. I'm not going into that, but remember both the scales are possible. There's no problem. Example, how do you rate the following product features? I'm just giving an example. How do you rate the following product features? use the following five point scale so we have a five point scale this is an itemized rating scale because each number has a description each number has a description so it's an itemized rating scale excellent good average poor very poor the first example we started with the cities best cities in india we had a scale there good very good good and so on that's an itemized rating scale so this is an itemized rating scale because each number has a description so how do you rate the following uh, product features like say for example quality is it five or four or three or two availability of a product is it five four three pricing promotion packing etc just an example uh, 
Uh, I think uh, a new teacher is getting eight. Shall, yes, I, stop? Sir. Shall I stop here? Um, hmm. Sir, uh, have you uh, discussed everything that you had in mind, sir? Or I think uh, we need a conclusion. Like, um, yeah, I'll come to. Don't take much more. Uh, you can, I think you can continue with uh, the uh, presentation because people are still joining, and uh, as long as possible, the participants can continue. I've already shared the feedback link. So, okay. if at all uh, people want to quit, they can quit. Uh, if you don't okay. mind uh, talking a bit more, I think you can continue. Yeah. Uh, with the present discussion, at least you can complete uh, the scale scales. part, scaling yeah, part. Yeah. So that's yeah. I'll do. I'll do the scaling. I'll finish the scales in about five yeah. minutes. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. Okay. So we have another scale called a fixed or a constant sum scale. Fixed or a constant sum scale. That is, the respondents are asked to distribute a given number of points, like fifty or eighty, across various items to measure the importance of each item. No, so we have got uh, different items, and what is the importance of each item? Usually, we ask them to rank first rank, second rank, third rank. But another method is uh, a more useful method is we give them fifty points. So, based on the importance, uh, let them distribute those fifty points across those different items. Like, let me give you an example. See, we take the features of a product: price, quality, attractiveness, life. After sales service, if you ask them to rank, they will say which is the most important. They may think price may be the most important, so they will give one. Quality may be second, or quality may be one. Price may be two. Attractiveness may be three, and so on. But this here, what we are saying, we we are giving them fifty points. Fifty points. Okay. So based on, if supposing they think that the quality is very very important, they can give twenty five marks. Out of fifty for quality, see twenty-five marks out of fifty for quality. Then price is important. Another ten for price. So twenty-five plus ten, thirty-five are over. Then attractiveness, life, and after sales service five each, and so on. See, so depending upon the importance is not equal. In ranking, what happens is we assume that the importance is equal. That's the mistake of ranking. We assume that the importance of the five uh, items are equal. So we give one, two, three, four, five. But it is not that. That is not the case. Quality may be very, very important. So we can give twenty-five marks or thirty marks out of fifty. Or sometimes price may be very important. So you can give forty marks out of fifty uh, uh, for price, and the other ten marks can be distributed among the others. Or sometimes you may think that all of them are equally important. In ranking, you can't do anything. Supposing all of them are equally important, then you can give ten marks to price, ten marks to quality, ten marks to attractiveness, ten marks to life, and ten marks to after sales service. So, so here it is very flexible, very flexible. So we give some fifty marks, and based on the importance, you can distribute the marks as you like. So there's a lot of flexibility, and the truth will come out. You see, the real truth will come out. If you think that the quality is very very important, and if you say, supposing a person considers only quality, he doesn't consider the other things, he doesn't mind the price or attractiveness, then he can give all the fifty marks to quality. So the real truth will come out uh, from the scale. It's not a fixed or constant sum scale. It's a very good scale. Then we have a staple. This is very important. Staple scales. Very interesting. Staple scale. Very interesting scale. Uh, here again, numbers ranging from plus three to minus three. See, plus three to minus three. Uh, it is useful in measuring the intensity and the direction of the response. If it is good, it is plus. If it is uh, not good, we give minus. The intensity is also measured. The intensity is also measured. The emotional intensity is also. For example, classroom management skill of a teacher can be. Measured on such a scale. If the teacher is very good in managing the class, he will be given plus three. If it is very bad, he will be given minus three. Now, next one is very, very easy, very, uh, very good to understand. Relation between the superior and subordinates can be measured on the scale. There is a superior and a subordinate. What is the relation? So, supposing the subordinate uh, hates the superior. Supposing the subordinate does not like the superior at all, he hates the superior. 
so that intensity emotional intensity he can express that emotional intensity by giving minus three see that is the advantage he can express that emotional intensity by giving minus three that means he doesn't like the superior at all that when he gives minus he feels uh, very happy so he is able to express that emotional intensity on the contrary if he is very happy with the superior very friendly with the superior, he gives plus three that means he is very happy that that emotional intensity can be expressed through plus understood so that is the that is the purpose of the scale helping the respondent to express his emotions also but when we are doing the analysis we will convert this into a different scale this because zero is there plus three plus two plus one zero minus one minus two minus three so zero is there so we cannot do analysis with zero here so we will convert it into plus three will be converted into seven six because it is there are seven points in the scale plus three to minus three there are seven points so we will convert plus three into seven six five four three two one that minus three will become one only after that after converting into six seven uh, six uh, uh, seven six five four three we will do the analysis part but the respondents will be able to give his emotional intensity by expressing plus or minus signs okay, okay. Um, right graphic rating scale the last the last scale uh, the respondents are asked to indicate their response on a uh, point on a scale like say 1 to 10 we say 1 to 10 we give a scale 1 to 10 and ask the respondent to rate whatever we are asking them to rate maybe the quality of a person quality of a product we are asking them to rate on a 1 to 10 scale different features of a product may be rated on a scale of 10 it may be used for comparing two products supposing uh, there are two products two types of mobiles you are asking them to rate the price and quality availability etc on a 1 to 10 scale supposing one mobile gets uh, for price one mobile gets uh, 8 whereas for uh, sorry quality for quality one mobile gets 8 the second mobile gets only 3 so that means the first mobile the quality is rated very high because it has got 8 out of 10 and the second mobile gets only 3 out of 10 so it is a simple thing we just like uh, we are uh, rating out of 10 that's all out of 10 how much score that particular mobile is getting so we can this is used for comparing two products or so two persons two teachers for example two teachers are scaled so one teacher gets uh, 8 out of 10 another teacher gets 2 out of 10 so obviously we know the first teacher the teachers like uh, the students like the first teacher uh, the student students do not like the second teacher obviously for some reason so this is for comparing two or three products evaluate your class participation behavior supposing you want to evaluate your own class participation behavior so that behavior pattern you are asking supposing you are studying about students a research study about students and asking you are asking the students to evaluate their class participation behavior if you ask them directly do you participate in classrooms uh, do you participate in uh, seminars and so on they will not be able to answer they will not answer instead of that we give it in an indirect way attentiveness in class how do you evaluate out of 10 if you are very attentive the students can say eight or nine participate in discussions if a student does not participate in a discussion he will give not zero he will give one the scale is remember the scale is from one to ten so if you are not at all participating in discussion the student will give one not zero one two three four etc if he is always participating he will give ten completion of assignments ten seminar presentations maybe five and so on. okay so that is the uh, ranking uh, let me come to the conclusion part the last slide video of honor video video of honor program video of honor okay uh, i just uh, i have uh, published a book on research methodology so you can note down this research methodology for social sciences published by and books in new delhi 2019 
this is uh, not available in bookshops as of now because they were unable to distribute it because of the covid situation but you can buy it online you can buy it online you get discount also research methodology for social sciences and handbooks so you can give my name and uh, because in my name there is no my name is uh, peculiar so you will immediately get this hmm? okay thank you very much for your patient listening let me wind up come back to the uh, yes uh, okay let me stop presenting yes uh, teacher sir uh, there are a few questions in the chat box sir can i please read it out yes yes definitely uh, uh, the first question is from uh, Ms. Rija Sukumar. She has asked in Likert scale, the central value is 3. But why do we give the value 3 for this point, especially when this point represents indifference in opinion? But it is more meaningful in numeric scale. Very good question. Very good question. In fact, there is a lot of discussion going on about that, uh, whether that uh, description should be changed. Uh, that that five point scale is okay, fine, no problem. But the yeah. the problem is about the description three, where neither satisfy, neither agree, nor disagree, okay. or indifferent. So that description now this uh, what you have raised this question. Many people are raising that question. There's a lot of discussion going on about it, and in fact some of them have changed the description as moderately uh, agreeing or so the description has to be changed. It is a very good observation which is uh, lively now, going on lively. OK, good question. Yes. Mm. Sindhu, ma'am, do you have a question? Dr. Sindhu, do you have a question, ma'am? OK, sir, uh, another question is by uh, Jay Bhadra Jay Raju. Uh, the person has asked in staple scale, are the plus and minus signs simply for indication? Is it not the same as the seven point scale when it comes to analysis? Yes, you are right. Uh, uh, that is actually it is a seven point scale. In 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 mathematical terms, it's the seven point scale. We are giving it the minus sign. We are allowing the respondent to use the minus scale just to express his emotions only, so that he will because then he will give, he will give the truth. That's all. He will give the truth. So we want the truth. But it is a seven point scale. So as you said, the intensity of the emotion can be known. Yes, that's the only Another question is uh, from Divya ma'am. Is there any op optimum number for items to be included in each construct? Is there Absolutely. any minimum or maximum number? No, not at all. Not at all. That depends upon the elements we have identified. It may be two, just two statements or it may be 10 statements. Uh, but uh, sometimes it may even be 15 statements. No problem. No minimum, no maximum. Okay, okay, sir. Sindhu, ma'am, do you want to ask something? Dr. Sindhu? So, dear participants, if any of you have any more uh, clarifications needed, if you have any queries to be asked, uh, please do ask it now. Sindhu, Sindhu is online. Yeah. yeah. Dr. Sindhu. Yeah, Sindhu, Dr. Sindhu. Okay, I think. Uh, uh, any, any more questions? There are no more questions in the chat box, sir. There are only three questions, and the others are just commenting about your session. Okay. Excuse me. So, Excuse me, uh, miss. Yeah. yeah, please do ask. Yes, sir, uh, while we are uh, setting the question or items, uh, is it necessary to add negative and positive statements or whether? Uh, just we have to rate it as uh, if it is negative just we are rating it as one instead of five is it enough uh, actually uh, see it's enough to have positive statements you know uh, but again 
uh, if you give positive statements, what will happen is that they will simply try to agree with those statements. So when we give a negative statement, they, they are forced to think about it. So we are trying to get the truth. So we are making the person think. If we give all positive statements, so the tendency is, you know, how we uh, fill the questionnaire. We try to fill the questionnaire as quickly as possible. So if we give all positive statements, so the person will be uh, tempted to agree with all of them. So we give some negative statements, then he will think about it. Yeah, so so that we get the truth. Okay, that is sir. Totally so, truth. okay sir. So it is just to ensure the accuracy of uh, yeah. the answers, yes, right? Okay, yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Does uh, any of you have any more questions? Some, somebody has asked about the YouTube I link. I will be uploading. Yeah. I will be uploading uh, the recorded session of uh, this webinar. And, uh, I can share the link, and uh, maybe probably by tomorrow we will be doing it. So send me also like, one. Send yeah, me sure, sure, sir. Sure, okay. sir. <laughs> I can so, uh, do this. I can sir, do uh, Femina has asked, uh, please differentiate moderating and mediating variables. If you can, <laughs> if it doesn't oh, take much takes, of the time, <laughs> yeah, it takes take some, some time. time. Yeah. But, yeah, <laughs> that's uh, some other time. <laughs> because uh, when you do about research, you do that. Uh, it's okay. Yeah, no yeah. problem, sir. Yeah. Sir, um, so as we have already passed the uh, specified timing, I think we yeah. can wind up the session. Yeah. I request yeah. uh, Renee George, Assistant Professor, the uh, Department of Commerce, to propose the vote of thanks. Renee, sir, please. Am I audible? Yes. Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Respected resource person, Dr. S. Kevin, principal, HOD, and all other participants. Good evening to all. We were listening about the techniques of formatting effective questionnaire. Preparation of a questionnaire is a serious challenge. At the same time, it is very important. Our resource person, Dr. S. Kevin, has explained in detail about each and every aspect of the preparation of questionnaire in a simple and understanding way. On behalf of Devamada College, I express my sincere gratitude to Dr. S. Kevin. And also, I thank the principal, HOD, coordinators, for your effort to organize the program. I thank all the participants for your valuable time. Once again, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, thank so you very much <laughs> for your patient. Uh, I think it was a good session, uh, very slow. People were able to understand. So I thank the organizers and the participants for giving me this opportunity to be with you. OK, thank you very much. Thank you so Thank you. much, dear Kevin, sir. Okay, okay. Okay, then. Shall so I looking leave? forward for more sessions, sir. Yeah, definitely. definitely. No problem. <laughs> Webinar is uh, no problem at all. No problem. Okay, I know. Thank you so okay. much, sir. And thank okay. you all participants for your time, your patient listening. Thank you all. I'm leaving. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, sir. <laughs>